So remember we went through this last offseason yeah. with Chris Jones and the Chiefs. Do you think a deal gets done before week one between these two? Um, no, I don't think Chris Jones is a Kansas City Chief next year. Oh. I think he's going to get a huge payday somewhere else. Yeah. And I think what Willie said yesterday, Plax, uh, who will join us at 8 o'clock in today, kind of intimated, you know, look, you, you've got the hardware. You've got the Super Bowl rings. And if we acknowledge that that's what you're fighting for, once you get it, now it's a lot easier to make a purely financial decision. And while Kansas City's in a position, if they want to, of giving him a significant contract for significant money, and there's no arguing that he you know, helped win a Super Bowl, yep. played an instrumental role, obviously, late, and then winning a Super Bowl, you got to believe of the 31 other teams out there, someone's going to say, man, if we could just add Chris Jones to our defense, now we're locked in and we're good to go. And I do believe there are teams out there that will say that. Now, Kansas City's always got the shot to, you know, to get the deal done. But to answer your very specific question, I do not think Chris Jones, and this is not based on anything, just you know, human nature, I don't think Chris Jones gets his biggest offer from Kansas City. I just don't. I, I agree with you. And I think if I'm Chris Jones, I start wrapping my head around the fact that I may be playing in another uniform next year solely because... Because like, he was willing to not play this year over money, right? Right. But and I, ultimately, they worked it out. And, you know, when he got the uh, the last sack, you know, he got the million-dollar bonus. So he kind of was even Steven on what he gave up in fines while he was sitting out. But, you know, obviously, Kansas City played hardball with him last year. And correct. But prior to that, he, he only had one all-pro underneath his belt. Right now, he has two. And he's a Super Bowl champion. So if you're Chris Jones, understand that, like I said, you're going to be in a another uniform next year. The money's going to be waiting for you. If I'm the Chicago Bears, go get him because your defense changes immediately. I know you got sweat. Now you talk about him uh, on the front line next to you. It can be a difference maker. Dude, yeah. when, I, when I look at the situation, I said to myself, well, they just won a Super Bowl. How do you not retain one of your star players? And I think, wait a second. They were in that exact same yeah. scenario yeah. with the exact same player a year ago. Yeah. And it was contentious and it ended up bleeding into the regular season. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was another uniform. Yeah, and look, don't forget the video of him sitting in that luxury suite in yeah. Detroit watching that game and not being with the guys and that whole stuff. So, look, it's the exact same scenario as a year ago. Now the player's a year older. Now he's got another Super Bowl ring. And now it comes down to hard, cold cash. Go and by it. the way. Uh, no one's going to blame him. You go out there, you tell your agent, I want to get an offer from every team in the league, and then I'll make a conscious decision of, you know, what's the right number to go play for a team that doesn't give me the same opportunity to win a championship as Kansas City gave me. And I do agree with Plax from yesterday. There's probably a wiggle room there where I'll take a little less than another team might be offering me if that team is Carolina to stay in Kansas City and win. But if I can go to a good team and make an absurd amount of money more than what Kansas City is willing to guarantee me, right. then I think you saw the last game for Chris Jones. Yeah, I was working on other titles, though, while you guys were talking over there. <laughs> good, good. I have 30 inches. Gotcha. Uh, oh, okay. I have that get home. through the hole. Right. Uh, yeah, it's like the McCaffrey story. Sure. Tough thing I'm working oh, on. Okay, yeah. uh, and I'm going to keep working on those Okay. Three, oh, good. So, so just keep, keep working on it. I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> Moving on to yeah. second and Oh, football. how about this one? How about this one? This is only if the Eagles win a Super Bowl. The tush push. Oh, oh I can see. That's, oh, that's like good. a fetish. That, that that's seems good. more that's fitting good. at all the yep. two you offer. Yeah, brother, yeah. Shove also Continue important. there if you want. Craig, do you think that they – is it important that the Niners retain IU? Yeah, I think it is important that they retain them. And let's not forget this. You know, the, uh, the fifth-year option was picked up. Yeah. So Brandon Ayuk is going to make, I think it's $14 million uh, next year. And then he becomes an unrestricted free agent. And, of course, they have the right to franchise him you know, into year six if they choose to. So, look, you know, you're talking to a guy who's frustrated because he had a chance to win the Super Bowl and he lost. And if I'm those guys, I don't do any interviews until I've calmed down a little bit and gotten the immediate emotion of losing another Super Bowl out of my system. Because you're pissed off. Yeah. And this is when I think sometimes the teams don't do players a solid and they make them available. Obviously, we want to hear from everybody. So selfishly, I'm glad there's a microphone in Brandon Ayuk's face and Feliciano's face and chat and all that stuff, right? Because we feed off that. But that is the worst time to ask a guy, hey, do you want to come back to San Francisco? Yeah. Right? But I 
but also at the end of the day, I think he also got emotional when he talked about what it meant to be a 49er. He goes, I came to work and play with guys who wanted to be a champion every day. So I think there's a lot of heartstrings attached to this situation. However, he then went out and tweeted, hey, don't forget what got you here, right? Meaning him. You talk about the big catch he had against Detroit in the NFC Championship game. Man, he pops all over the highlight wheel, uh, reel for the San Francisco 49ers. But it comes down to... Him understanding, like, he's he's at a point where he has to stand up for himself, too, right? Like, he has to get the bag. You talked about them picking up his fifth-year option. Yep. He may have to sit out this year. No, you don't, you don't sit out. You got $14 million coming your way. I don't know. Nobody wants to play in a one-year deal, especially nobody. when you're in your late 20s. Right, and 25 you, you know, years old. You don't want to risk, obviously, injury and all that kind of nonsense. But if you learned anything from, uh, you know, guys who did it before you, play football. Go out there and play. You got $14 million bucks coming your way. If they franchise you, the number goes up to like $18 million in the next year. And they recognize that we're a much better team with you on our roster. He knows Plus, that, too. everybody else has signed up. But Everyone's I, under contract. But if, if, if I'm him, and you just – I know you made a great point. If he gets injured, he gets injured, his, his value goes way down. Yes. Now, this year's contract is guaranteed because there's that option you that yes. picked up. So, no matter what happens, Brandon Ayuk is getting $14 million In the to bet. play football for one year. And, of course, this is the business of football where Sam Frank can play games with them. They can franchise them next year if they want to. Right. And they can franchise them again after that. But that doesn't seem to be their M.O. Their MO, and you saw with Nick Bosa uh, just over a little less than a year yep. ago, was we'll let you sit out training camp. We're not going to bust your balls about any of the mini camp or the offseason stuff. And then right when it's getting scary, we'll get a deal done because if I'm San Francisco, you know, there are some teams where we could honestly say – you could feel the window closing on Super Bowl opportunities. And the majority of those teams happen to play in the AFC mm -hmm. because of all the quarterback competition. Right now, for me, the window for San Francisco is still wide open. You've got a quarterback making no money, under contract for two more years. You've got virtually every star on your team, other than Chase Young, locked up contractually. Right. Uh, you've shown that you have a GM in John Lynch who's very creative. And knows how to get town in the draft and it's requiring free agents. So to me, that window is wide open. So if I'm Brandon Ayuk, unless Kansas City, you know, comes calling or some other team, which they can't right now right, because yeah. you're under contract, you're in a weird spot. You have to come back and play because you're getting 14 million bucks, you're under contract, and they are not trading you. So Brandon Ayuk is going to be a San Francisco 49er next year, whether he wants to be or not. And truly, if he really truly it has a prioritization of a championship and playing with people that want to win a championship, I can't think of a better team than the 49ers to be. Right. And, and yeah. take stock of it. Who's their competition right now? Pre-draft, pre-free agency, yeah. and any type of trades, which are not all that Eagles, Cowboys, big Lions. in the NFL. Eagles, Cowboys, Lions. I mean, so the Cowboys aren't even in your league. Like, yeah. you dominated them, but I agree they're a playoff yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. Detroit might very well have been a one-hit wonder this year. We don't know yet, and that's no disrespect to what right. Dan Campbell's built there because they're all coming back. You got Philly, talent-wise. You know they're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. But who's really pressing you? Green Bay. Why do you keep continue to sleep on. on Green Bay? Green Bay, man. They're, they're, they're why they're like 23 you and a half. You refuse to invest in Green Bay. And I do not know why. What okay. did Jordan Love in that outfit did I, I, not show you enough? They almost beat the Knights. It took a last-minute yeah. drive by Purdy. I don't like to, to say things just for the sake of saying them, as you know. It's not my style. I've never sure. done that in 32 years. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Okay. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to write it down. Oh, You okay. can put it in a little in a, Where in a little, jar? Write it in a little down. time capsule envelope yeah. if you want. All right? And I'm saying it, I want to be clear about this, just to bust your chops. All right? I think you're going to be surprised okay. this year. Yeah, here's where you're going to be surprised. I'll say it right now. 2024 predictions. The Green Bay Packers come in last place. Oh, in oh. what are you talking about? <laughs> I say That's again. nonsense. I'm going to say it again. The it's green, all nonsense. The Green Bay Packers. No, where the Vikings are like, what about us? In last place. In their division? In their division. Oh, please. Okay? The That's the Viking spot. Okay. That's the Viking spot. Okay. I'm going to write it down, put a little envelope, give it to the producers. There's 19 of them, a little time capsule. You can hang on to it, and we'll bring it out next year. We have a receipt board. 
We did. Uh, you over that? That's dead. That's oh, you okay. don't do that anymore? Last season? That's all. That idea didn't go too well. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.